Welcome to this next lesson. And this one's all about how you can add damage and dirt to your models using the Pixar Dirt and the Pixar Curvature nodes. Now, adding damage to your models is a great way to tell the story of that model and what it's been through to get there. So, for instance, has it been left in an old dusty barn for the last 15 years? Or is it new and just fallen over and only has a few scratches on it? Has it been shot at with a gun, attacked with a sword or blasted by a laser beam? Which direction has the damage happened? Is it all at the front of a rocket re-entering Earth's atmosphere? Or has your model been rained on from above for the last 16 weeks? So there are many ways to tell the story of an object with damage. But I would always recommend that you use reference photos and try and be creative, but don't feel like every edge around your model always needs to be damaged. So use damage sparingly and try not to be tempted to go too over the top with it. Now, there are a number of different ways to creating edge wear and dirt on your model. The first way, and which is the way I'm going to show you here in this lesson, is to create it procedurally within RenderMan by using the dirt and curvature nodes and then blending noises and maps over the top to create edge breakup and variation to the masks. And the advantage of working like this is that you can create a fully procedural layered material and then use it on whatever model you like in the future. So if you create a stunning chipped paint material, it can be saved to the preset browser and reused on other models in other projects. And it can also be shared across other DCCs as well. So as you can see here, I've taken the same shader as I use on the bike frame. I've jumped into Katana and I've applied it to the robot. Now the one thing you might find is that the more layers and occlusion masks and edge breakups that you start to have in your procedural workflow is that it can start to have an impact on your overall render times. But luckily RenderMan has a solution for this and that's being able to bake out your materials and masks using the Pixar Bake Texture node. Now you want to think of this node as a bake point in your shading network and therefore anything downstream of this bake point will be baked into the texture and does not require any further calculation. Now you need to keep in mind that if you want to change anything downstream of that bake point you'll need to rebake that map out again. So that's one way of creating your edge and damage masks. But the other way is that you can paint these masks in Mari and Substance Painter as well. And at Pixar, they use the best of both worlds. So using their in-house procedural material tool called Flow, artists have the flexibility of creating stunning procedural materials and then they would normally paint their mask in something like Mari. So you get the flexibility of procedural materials, but you also get the creativity of hand-painted masks as well. So let's take a look at the curvature node first. And this is really good for finding the edges of your geometry. And it's useful for edge damage such as paint chips on metal or wood, or to even wear out the edges on plastics too. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead here and hide most of this bike so the render works a bit faster. And I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom into a little part of this piece down here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna solo this Pixar curvature node that I've got down here so we can see exactly what this is doing. Okay, so now you can see what the curvature on my bike frame looks like and I'm just going to run you through these parameters here. So the first option here is samples and this basically controls how many samples are going to be used to smooth out and perfect your masks. So if I just put a region around this and then I change this to three, and then mine was set to 16, which is gonna apply 16 samples so I get a much nicer result on my curvature mask. So max distance controls how far your curvature spreads. So a smaller number is gonna be tighter edges and a larger value is gonna be blurrier and softer edges. So if I put this to one, you can see that my curvature now starts to really expand out. So if I put this to say 0.5, now I'm in the middle and now I get this kind of slightly softer curvature but because I wanted really sharp edges I've taken this down to 0.1. So sample distribution allows you to control whether your curvature is weighted in a specific direction. The uniform means that they're not weighted in any particular direction and then cosine allows you to use these two options to control the direction of your curvature. So I'm just going to leave this on uniform for the minute. So bias affects the fall off of the curvature. So again, if I take this to say something like 12, you can see that what I now get is a much softer fall off. And if I come back down again to say something like five, I now start to crunch in my fall off of my curvature. And again, one, and then if I can go down, back down to point two, I'm gonna get a really thin and sharp fall off to my curvature. Now I'm just gonna put this back to point five and then I'm just going to skip over these for a sec. I'm just going to show you what this output type does. 
And at the minute it's set to convex, which is only showing me my outward facing edges of my model. So now if I set this to concave, you can see that now what it shows me is my inward facing edges. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger and I'm just going to zoom out so we can see a slightly wider part of our bike. So this is our convex. So you can see here that we get these nice edges here and we can break these up later. And then if I set this back to concave, you can see that now we've got our inner edges shown. So always keep in mind that when you're working with this Pixar curvature node is that what you're creating is you're creating your edge damage mask. So always make sure that you're jumping between your references and what you're doing with the Pixar curvature node in Maya. So the other option you have here in this output type is you can control both of them. So now what I'm seeing on screen is I'm seeing my concave and convex edges and I can control these with this threshold. So if I want to get rid of all of my convex, I slide this threshold up to, to one. And then if I want to control how much concave, I can then adjust it with this threshold. So this is really useful if you want to have both of the masks visible at the same time, but you also want to have control over them. Now the last two things I'm going to show you are this output gain. And I've got this set to 200. But if I go back to the render man default of one, you can see what happens is that it's super, super dark. Now, this basically allows me to add a multiplier to my output. And if I take this up to say 50, you can now start to see that I'm getting brighter and then 100. And then 100 is even brighter, but I kind of went with 200 because I really wanted a very black and white start mask. So the next thing I want to show you is this monochrome output. And at the minute, this is ticked on. So, so the only output I'm getting from this node is black and white. But if I go ahead here and I turn this monochrome output off, and if I go ahead and revert these values back to their default, you can now see that what I get is two colors. So the red is showing me the convex and the green is showing me the concave. Now, again, you can go ahead and adjust these with the threshold, but the really useful thing is that you can now output these from the red and also from the green outputs of your curvature node. So this is really useful if you want to control your concave and convex outputs in a slightly different way. So for instance, you may want to break up your outer edges more than your inner edges or apply a different breakup texture to either. So before we move on to the dirt node, let me show you how I break up my edges. So I'm just going to go ahead here and put this back to monochrome output. You can see here that what I've got this edge chips texture and because I'm trying to use this as procedurally as I can without any UVs, I'm using this triplanar round cube node. And then what I do with that is I basically invert this texture and then I run it through this Pixar threshold node to add much more stark black and white crunch to my texture. And then what I've done here is I then blend the output. So I'm blending the output of my curvature node. So if I go ahead here and solo it, and again, I've overdriven these values so you can really see it very obviously, is that I've got my output of my Pixar curvature and I've got my output of my edge chips and then I blend them together using a darken. So this is effectively breaking up the output of my Pixar curvature node. Okay, so that was the Pixar curvature node and let's have a look now at the Pixar dirt node. And this one's really good for adding things like dust and dirt and rust into the crevices of your geometry. And that's exactly how I'm using it on the bike frame is that I'm using the Pixar dirt node and I'm breaking it up as I did with the curvature node. And I'm using this as a mask to drive things like the oil and the rust within the crevices of my bike frame. So let's go ahead here and have a look at this Pixar dirt node. And the first two parameters here are occluded color and unoccluded color. And for most purposes, it's actually fine to just leave these two colors at their default. Now, these next few parameters here, they're all pretty much the same as they were within the Pixar curvature node. So you've got samples here and here I've got four. So again, I can go ahead and add 16 and you can see here it'll clean up the results of our dirt node much, much better with 16 samples. Again, here I've got a cosine and uniform sample distribution. This is where I control how much fall off I want on my curvature. So a greater number will make the mask a bit sharper. And then if I go down to something like one, you can see here that I get a much softer fall off. And again, things like max distance will also come into play. So if I add five into the max distance, you can see that the spread here becomes wider. And again, this is where jumping between your references and Maya 
really help so you can get creative with how these fall off the max distances work. So this next option here, direction, allows you to put dirt inside or outside or both of your geometry. And this works in a similar way to the convex and concave parameter within the Pixar curvature. Now this next option here, bias direction, is interesting because it allows you to control which way you want your occlusion to appear. So this is X and this is Y and this is Z. So if I set Y to something like minus 1, so you can see here that what happens is that because we're using a bias direction of minus 1 on the Y direction, our occlusion is really only coming in from the top parts of our geometry. So This is really useful for things like dust. Okay, so I'm just going to put that back to 0. And then these two things here, you've got this bias coordinate system, which allows you to do things like object or world. And this trace set here allows you to include or exclude other objects into your occlusion and drive that within the Pixar dirt. So one little tip here is that I can start to break up this occluded color by inputting a texture into the input of the occluded color. And now you can see that what I'm starting to do is by driving this occluded color with this texture map, I start to get this really interesting breakup. So if I zoom in here to the back axle, you can see that what I'm doing is I'm driving the occluded color with this texture. And if I just make the max distance a bit more, you can now start to see that what I'm getting is a very sort of dusty-like mask. And again, in the same way here is that I then start to adjust this further downstream. So I've got this Pixar remap here. And then I then layer the output of my Pixar dirt back over the top. And so this is basically how I make my dusty masks for things like the dust that's occluded inside of the crevices of the bike frame. And I also use this technique for making rust as well. So in quick summary, this using this procedural dirt and curvature nodes allows you to fully create procedural materials. But if you want some more creative control, then I would consider painting your own edge and dirt maps within Mari or Substance Painter. 